shadow of Fu Manchu. Based on the stories by Sax Roma. Special Inspector Nayland Smith has discovered the object of Dr. Fu Manchu's presence in London to be the elimination or abduction of Europe's outstanding scientists, inventors, statesmen, and the engineering of their deaths or their transportation to the headquarters of the Black Poppy Society, a secret organization of super criminals located in the interior of China. With Dr. James Petrie, Smith arrives at the home of Sir Crichton Davy, the first on Fu Manchu's list found that the British statesman has already fallen a victim to the insidious Dr. Fu. While Smith, Petrie, and Inspector Weymouth of Scotland Yard are examining the death chamber, a strange, weird cry is heard outside the house. A movement in the window catches Smith's eye. He fires! Nayland, what was it? Wait, Scott. Must be losing my grip. Missed. Every shot. What the devil was it, Smith? Whatever it was, it's gone. Slipped out of the window just as we came in. You heard that cry? Of course. What were you shooting at me in the window? I didn't see it clearly, just a glimpse. And that cry, you heard it before? In India, the cry of the Dacoit. In this instance, it was very probably used to call back the thing that caused Sir Crichton's death. Are you all right? Open the door, Weymouth. Let them in now. There's no danger for the moment. No shot, Inspector. What was it? Never mind that now. This envelope on the desk. It's the one that was brought to Sir Crichton just before we arrived. The same, sir. He started to open it. I'll wager it contains blank paper. There, you see? Yet it served its purpose. But the blank paper! Now look. No, don't touch it. Smell. Hmm. Peculiar scent. What is it? A rare species of orchid. It grows only in certain sections of Burma. Travelers who pluck it have often been found dead. With nothing to show the cause of death but a small red mark on the face, or neck, or arm. Such as we just found on Sir Crichton. It's called the Zayat Kiss. You recognize the scent? At once. I'm certain that the Zayat, a deadly poisonous creature which kills the traveler, is attracted by the scent of the flower. But Fu Manchu, how did he... He's undoubtedly brought the Zayats with him, along with a supply of the orchid bulbs which he grows to feed the thing. Then you figure this this weird thing followed the scent into this room where Sir Crichton was at work and... Uh, wait, didn't Burgoyne say the windows were closed? That one is open. Open from outside. Vines easily climbed, and Sir Crichton very likely had the envelope in his hands when the Zayat stung him. And you believe the Zayat was recalled to uh, whoever brought it by that wailing cry? Have any of you a better theory? By Jove, it's unbelievable. Fu Manchu must be a fiend incarnate. He is indeed, Weymouth. His methods are insidious, to say the least. While you're finishing up here, Petrie and I'll have a look at the garden. Come along, Petrie. Uh, just what do you expect to find out here, Naaman? I really don't know, old chap. Probably nothing now. Whether you take this footpath, I'll take that other. We'll meet at the rear of the house. 
And keep your eyes open. Now, just what the devil am I to look for? Hmm. I wonder. Oh, hi, Jova. Beg your pardon. Forgive me, Dr. Petrie, if I start you. Hmm. Who are you? Tell me, please. Is it true that Sir Crichton Davy has been murdered? Murdered? Well, I, I can't say definitely. But he is dead. Yes, he is dead. But who are you? I am no one who you know. But I have information for the police. This letter. Will you give it to the proper person in authority? Person in authority? Well, yes, that would be Special Inspector Nayland Smith. Yes, I'll see that he gets it. And when you have given it to him, leave him at once. Yeah. Uh, but I say, uh, uh, wait a moment, you... Hmm. That's strange. I wonder what she wants. Petrie! Petrie, huh? Petri, that woman. Who was she? I don't know. Uh, she gave me this for you. Information for the police, she said. Describe her. Oh, a lovely creature, Nathan. Eyes and hair as black as night. A skin like... Did you notice a crescent-shaped scar at the outer corner of the left eye? Why, oh, yes. You know her. Know her. It's Caramay, his daughter, Petrie. What? A new letter through your fingers. You might have forced her to reveal his hiding place. Who men choose daughter? Oh, that's impossible. She's not Chinese. Eurasian. But what difference whether his daughter, wife, or slave? She's nevertheless his spy. Employed to get this letter into my hands. Here. Smell it. Recognize the scent? Great Scott, Nathan. It's the same. She told me to leave you as soon as I'd given it to you. Yes. She was a high card to play, but Foo doesn't know that I hold her higher. I, I don't understand. That woman's one of his keenest weapons. Fortunately for us, she evidently became attracted to you. She wouldn't have warned you. Oh, that's ridiculous, Nayland. I didn't even know her name. Nevertheless, it's true. And you know what the receipt of a similar letter meant in Sir Crichton's case? A horrible death. Right. But come on, we've finished here. Uh, now, Nayland... I followed you blindly in this business. I haven't insisted on explanations. Now, I must know what this is all about. I'll explain on the way home. We're not safe here. Well, you certainly don't believe you'd try a shot at Oh, no, Petrie. Fu Manchu spawns the use of noisy weapons. Oh, come. There's a cab across the road. Mm. Oh, cab. Well, where to now? Baker Street. Oh, my place? Yes, here. Get in. Oh. Where to Baker Street, driver? Right, oh, sir. I say, Neelan, someone took the cab behind us. I think it's following us. I expected that. Well, if I escape alive in this business, old chap, I'll know that I lead a charmed life. But aren't you going to try to throw them off? Useless. Wherever we went, Fu Manchu would find us. You no doubt still wonder why a servant of the British government lately stationed in Burma appears in London in the character of a detective. Or rather. Simply because I stumbled onto a clue, quite by accident. Mm -hmm. I discovered definite evidence of the existence of Fu Manchu. Well, is he an emissary of an eastern power? I can't say definitely. But I do know that a certain eastern power will be requested to see that Dr. Fu removes himself and his influence as far and as quickly from England as possible. And if your eastern state refuses? Then, Petrie, anything may happen. A madic man. A madman with unlimited power. He's much more. Whether a fanatic or a duly appointed agent... Fu Manchu is undoubtedly the most malignant personality existing in the world today. He's a fluent linguist, both in civilized and barbaric languages. He's an adept in all the arts and sciences a great university could teach him, and many black arts that no university could possibly teach him. He has the brains of any three men of genius. But what is his object? His object? Why did René Corot fall dead in a Paris opera house? Heart failure, wasn't it? He died because his last speech had shown that he held the key to the secret of Tong King. And what became of the Grand Duke Stanislaus? Do you remember? Uh, for suicide, as I recall it. He alone was fully aware of Russia's growing peril. He alone knew the truth about Mongolia. That knowledge caused his death. But Sir Crichton Davy... He was the only living Englishman who understood the vast importance of the Tibetan frontiers. I'm beginning to see him. Yeah. Yes, it was their knowledge of the East that doomed them. When any great leader dares to arouse the West to a sense of the awakening of the East, he's destroyed. Incredible. You mean to say that Fu Manchu controls this, this terrible secret movement? Exactly, Petrie. Fu Manchu and none other. Here you are, Governor. 21 Baker Street. Eh? Oh, yes. Here you are, driver. Thank you, sir. Look. That car back there. It stopped. 
followed us every foot of the way, Neil. Of course, Peter. Come on, let's go in. But but they followed us all the way. Aren't you going to do anything? Of what use? We could prove nothing against them. Further, it's very evident that an attempt will be made in, upon my life tonight. And by the same means that proved so successful in the case of Sir Crichton. You can't mean that he'll make an attempt against you here. I mean exactly that. We'll have an opportunity to observe the Zayat kiss in operation very soon. The scented letter given you by the woman is ample proof of that. Now, what caused Sir Crichton's death, Nayland? What is the Zayat kiss? I don't know exactly. Some sort of insect, I believe, which is attracted by this perfume. Well, what sort of insect? Again, I say I don't know. But forewarned is forearm, Petrie. Fu Manchu has made the blunder common to all men of unusual genius. He's underrated his adversary. Let's go into the bedroom. Now let us appear to make preparations to retire. I'm sure we may rely on Dr. Fu's servants to attempt my removal, if not yours. Well... I say, uh, roll those golf clubs in that blanket and put them in your bed. I'll do the same with these pillows in mine, eh? Yes. Ah. There we are. And now? I'll turn out the light and take a chair into the corner by the door. We'll be hidden by anyone looking through the window, yet we'll be able to see a silhouette against the window in the moonlight. Lower the sash. Right. You shouldn't have long to wait. I put the perfumed envelope on the coffee table in the center of the room. You know, it's a climb of 30 feet, Nalan, from the garden to my window. Oh. To a dacoit who very likely operates desired kiss and ivy-covered wall is a grand stick it is. Two o'clock. Presently, Petrie. Presently. You have your flash? Yes. And my crystal. Good. When I give the word, turn your flash on the envelope on the coffee table. Don't shoot. This golf club of yours will do the trick. Are you certain, Nalan? Shh, shh, shh. Look. The window. The shadow that is above the sill. He has a box in his hand. He tossed it through the window. The flash between. Light. Great Scott Nayland, look! Hold the light steady. Quick, man, quick! Two.